Hi everyone, it's me, Commissioner Allison Collins. I serve on the Board of Education in San Francisco and I just wanted to give folks an update because on Tuesday we will be reviewing a plan that has been shared by staff to talk about what we're going to do with learning this fall. It's been a big, um, it's a big issue, it's a national news, especially with Trump kind of demanding that everybody go back to normal. And um, it's a big conversation locally. I know there's a lot of families that are anxious and wanna know also what to do as far as planning goes. Will they be, be able to go back to work? Will it be safe? This is a really important meeting. It's a great opportunity for you to learn about all the considerations that school boards across the country are having to wrestle with. And additionally, I also wanted to say how impressed I am with our district in the sense that this has been a really community-based process. And we have involved CBOs, those are community-based organizations, we've involved parents, we've involved central office and also site level teachers and educators and labor. On Friday, the district posted its presentation, which we will be reviewing on Tuesday. And if you're not familiar with all the things that we're talking about, I thought I could go through some of the basic concepts that we've all been kind of discussing. And I just want everyone to be able to participate. And in order to do that, you need to be informed. So people might be confused about kind of who does what. And so I just wanted to cover that in this presentation, what I really like is there's actual links in the presentation to the documents that we are all using. Um, there's the national documents, and then there's also the state level documents, and then even city documents that explain how we're making our decisions. And so you might have heard of the CDC, which is the Center for Disease Control. And when you talk, when you hear about Fauci and all of that, that's the national level CDC, but we also have a California CDC. In addition, we have a Department of Public Health and that exists as well. We have recommendations at the state from the California Department of Public Health. And we also have a local um, departments of public health. And because our city is also a county in San Francisco, we have both a city and a county Department of Public Health. And so that may be all confusing, but basically their role is to, to let us know the science and what's safe and what's not safe. And if we're gonna operate any type of business or childcare or restaurant or small business or school, these are the things that folks need to do and are recommended in order for us to feel safe. And the CDC has been really good about producing um, recommendations and guidelines, and that's where we get the masks, rules, and the six-foot distancing and things like that. Additionally, the Department of Public Health is the department that monitors health, and it makes recommendations about what they're seeing. And specifically locally, we rely on the Department of Public Health in San Francisco to tell us how we're doing, how are, what are hospitalization rates, what, are, um, what does testing look like, um, and they also, um, both of those bodies though, make recommendations that take into, um, take into consideration a variety of factors, and they both make recommendations about how we should operate businesses, and they can say whether schools may open or not. Um, so if they say, you know, we have to shelter in place, that comes from the Department of Public Health. But when it comes to actually opening schools or how we, how we are going to, um, whether we're gonna do distance learning, or whether we're gonna do a hybrid model, which is kind of maybe some kids go to school and some don't, or alternating, that is a decision of the, of the Board of Education. And we are the ones who will, will look over all the recommendations and we will decide, you know, based on community feedback, based on conversations with staff, what, and based on the recommendations from the Department of Public Health, what makes sense. Um, the superintendent, and you have a variety of chiefs and department heads, they are the ones who are in charge with actually implementing plans. Um, and they also are going to be presenting, based on all these um, town halls and all this feedback, what they think the community is saying and what they feel can be feasibly implemented, right? Because, you know, you might say, well, we could um, have students go to school right away if we have six foot distancing, and then we can look at our schools and say, well, we can't actually fit all of those kids in the school at one time. It's just not possible. So they're taking all those uh, factors into place. They're using that knowledge with input from the community and they are gonna be making their presentation. And so that is also contained in the presentation that's on Board Docs and I'll link in the bottom to the doc document. 
I did also want to talk about timeline. I know folks are feeling really anxious and feeling like, come on already, I need to make plans. Um, I think all of us are feeling, or maybe I'll just speak for myself, feeling really just tired of being stuck at home, tired of um, just, it never seems to be kind of over. And I know a lot of us were anticipating and looking forward to coming back to school next fall and feeling like things were normal. And so I guess there's a frustration that, you know, we haven't come up with a plan yet. And there are maybe other districts that are saying, oh, we have a plan and we're ready to go. I, I want folks to know that we have spent, and this is, I think, true of almost all school districts in the country, but definitely in California, we have spent the last two months just dealing with budget concerns because the governor threatened all schools with a 10% budget cut during an economic downturn, which means we get less money locally um, during a pandemic, which has been more expensive. We're, we are paying for school meals that we don't get reimbursed for. We are um, looking for donations to buy computers for kids that, you know, I mean, we're not, we're not a technology company and yet we are taking care of broadband. We're trying to do all these things. This is true across the state. So for the last two months, we have been just pulling our hair out, trying to figure out how to beg, borrow and steal. How do we make it happen so that we can make sure that um, schools are fully resourced no matter what. And we don't have any cuts on sites and we're still going to have some staffing cuts, but it took us until about, I'd say July 1st was like, the last minute date for us to submit a budget to the state. And that was based on last minute decisions um, and agreements between the governor and the state legislature to preserve our budgets without the 10% cuts. Um, and as I said, we're still gonna have budget shortfalls because we have less revenue from the city. Um, there's a whole bunch of other stuff, you know, that is affecting us economically. So to be really fair, we put together some plans and we put together some working groups as a district. And then as soon as we got those budgets in, this past week, which is the week after we submitted budgets, we started town halls. We've had so many of them so far. Um, we've engaged with parents, we've engaged with educators, we've engaged with school staff. And then based on that input, we also have working groups. And we have three separate working groups um, that are looking at three separate categories. We have like our human capital, our human resources, our people, right? We have logistics like buildings, um, ventilation, buses, all of the things that just the nuts and bolts of, you know, operations. How do we make this work? And then we have teaching and learning. What, you know, what are we going to do? How are we going to handle teaching? I, I'm trying to think, how do you use manipulatives when you can't share stuff? Um, how do you deal with kindergartners or first graders? Um, how do you, how do you, have a pod of a high school class um, when kids have five different teachers, like how does that work, right? So those three groups are also made up of a variety of people, not just central office staff, but they've also included parent leaders, um, community-based organizers and activists, um, as well as site level staff and central office staff. And so they've been taking that input and they've also been incorporating like all of this information from the Department of Public Health and, um, and, and then also the legislature in terms of rules about how many days we're supposed to be open and how many, you know, how many minutes students need to get to be learning, all of that information they've been synthesizing and they are like, they basically had a week of town meetings. By Friday, they had a, um, a staff recommendation that went into a PowerPoint on Friday, which is amazing to me. And next Tuesday, we're gonna be reviewing it. So I do want to say, I think anybody who knows me knows I call things out when I have a problem with them and I have a very high standards, but I feel like this has really been an incredible process and I personally have never seen our district engage and partner with the community in building a plan. That said, it's, it hasn't been a fast process because when you partner with people, it takes longer and um, it takes a lot of engagement. And so there are some districts that you may have been hearing about across the country, they're like, oh, we got it covered, we're doing this or that. Um, it, I'm gonna assume that they haven't really been able to engage that much with community members um, because things have been changing so much. And um, also, you know, it's easy to hire a consultant to just like slap a plan together and make it really pretty, but this has been really a thorough process. And even now, it's not fully baked. 
the whole idea is we want it to be transparent and we want it to include community. Our next board meeting, this coming Tuesday, is an opportunity for the, for the community to continue to inform a draft plan that is gonna be presented to us on Tuesday. So I encourage you to get informed, learn about it, and also um, and have, make your voice heard. Join us on Tuesday at that meeting and um, let us know what you think. Um, and then finally, I guess, I just wanted to say, you know, based on what is the plan, I know people are nervous, like all this stuff, great, but what are we doing? What is being recommended by the district is a good move. Um, I'm not comfortable opening schools, opening you know, hallways when we have a rising COVID, COVID epidemic in our country. And knowing that we do not have necessary PPE and it's just gonna take, just it's just an operational nightmare trying to figure out how to kid, get kids to school on buses that are socially distanced. You know, we have classrooms that don't have proper ventilation. There's just too many um, things to consider. And let's also consider our teachers are on break right now. A lot of our school staff are on break. We save money as a district because we don't pay everybody all year. And so if we're really gonna make robust plans that are actionable and make sense, we're gonna do it with the people who have to do the work. And that means come August, when we have our first day of school, we'll have time. We can start with distance learning um, and distance learning is not optimal, but we can spend between now and the first day of school trying to improve our distance learning and support teachers and students and families. Um, that should be our focus. And then as we learn more about um, how the COVID epidemic is going in our city and as we get more clear on resources and as we get more clear on operational kind of possibilities, working with staff on site, then we can start to think about a phased hybrid model, which means still some students would be staying at home, other students that are most needy to be in classroom. I think about our younger students that are just not as good at working online. They need more parent support. And those parents also need more support because you know childcare is definitely a challenge. High schoolers do much better independently. Um, so we're, we'll be focusing probably on younger students, also students that have learning disabilities or students that, that receive special education services and also um, students that are English learners because their parents, you know, they just can't help in a different language. So those, those are bigger challenges. And foster youth and homeless youth. Those are the groups of students that are clearly identified as needing some more support. And I anticipate we will be focusing on trying to provide that support um, to those students first um, as we, you know, kind of wait on the city and the county and the, and the nation to, you know, try and get, get their hands on um, this crisis. Finally, I just want to say that um, we wouldn't have to worry so much about all this if we were actually doing better about dealing with this pandemic. If it wasn't raging out of control, then we would be feeling much safer about opening up our schools. And so the best thing that we can do if we want to get back to school is we all have to wear masks, we all have to socially distance, follow the rules, and um, really push our leaders at the state and the federal level to fully fund education, pass the HEROES Act, stop those Republicans who are not um, willing to support schools with the necessary supplies that they need to make schools safe, and um, and let's like let's get rid of this virus let's team up and get rid of this virus so that we can all get back to doing the things that we love doing and we can be in school and it can be joyful and we can like hug each other and and all that stuff so anyway thanks for watching um, please share this with anyone who's really interested and um, i'm more than happy to try and answer questions if you dm me i may not be able to answer right away but um it will also let me know and i can try to post over the next days or weeks to answer questions that people have because I really do appreciate when folks are involved, when they make their voices heard, even um, when we don't agree. I think it, it challenges our thinking and the plans that come as a result of that are always much better. So thank you all for your support of our public schools and I look forward to seeing you via Zoom on Tuesday during our board meeting at three o'clock. Thanks.